Say Channel 9 wanted to, oh, I don't know, invest in some new vans. Well, one way to dispose of the old ones would be to bring them here to Grossman Iron and Steel, where in only seven seconds, the seven-passenger all-wheel drive van would become unrecognizable. Let me introduce you to Betty Jane, a machine that is powered by an eight thousand horsepower motor. You see all these items here ready to be scrapped? Well for Betty Jane, this is just a snack. The, the machine's literally eating that material at, at the rate of 300 tons an hour. So, you know, that's five tons every 60 seconds. Betty Jane and her car shredding capabilities are new to Grossman. However, Grossman isn't new to the scrap industry or St. Louis. It was in 1920 when Abraham Grossman started the business from scratch. Uh, he had one horse and one wagon, and he went around collecting junk, uh, literally. Some of it was scrap metal. Some of it was hides and furs and bones and glass and things like that. But uh, in, the, in the early 1920s, he kind of began to focus on uh, scrap steel as his business. And all that material will be redirected to This is our, Cap Grossman. Uh, he and his brother Skip, who was in Brazil looking at more equipment on the day I visited, are third generation proprietors of the family business. A lot of people, you know, have family businesses, the family store, the family law firm, the family medical practice, and you know, you have the family iron and steel company. Is that something that was like Oh great! I'm going into the family business. Well, or? there was uh, there was always a lot of resistance, but you know that sense of underlying manifest <laughs> destiny was was definitely there. Uh, well, let me tell you, this family scrap business is a lot more glamorous than at first glance. Okay, maybe glamorous isn't the right word, but it is really cool. Okay, so here's how it works. Trucks come in carrying all the scrap and it gets weighed. Now this scrap can fall into one of two categories, new and old. The first category is what we call industrial scrap and that comes from manufacturing plants. It's oftentimes referred to as prompt scrap because it's delivered to the marketplace every day. They're stamping parts and machining things and fabricating things every day and we pick up that scrap and bring it into our plant to turn it into a product that's usable by the steel mills. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, that's I had there. Cap dumb that um, down for me just a little bit. He this, compared this it to something I understand. Cookie dough. You know how you can cut shapes into it and there's always something left over? Well, unlike cookie dough, you can't eat these leftovers. So they are brought here to be recycled. Uh, the other major category of scrap we refer to as obsolete scrap and that is an overarching category that includes a lot of things that have lived their useful life out in society. Cars and yeah well some people call it junk <laughs> um, and to many people it is but it's recyclable for the most part and it comes to market so to speak at the end of its useful life when a car is worn out it goes through a salvage process and then ends up at a facility like ours. The salvage process is very important. It's not just for retrieving workable parts, but for guaranteeing safety. All the cars must be emptied of gas and freon, basically anything that can cause an explosion. Even batteries need to be removed. If a battery is left in the car and the car meets Betty Jane, lead would be distributed into the product and they don't want to do that. These cars arrive at Grossman thoroughly salvaged. 
but they get tossed around a bit for good measure. By doing this by the claws, is that a, is that a yeah. technical term? Well, yeah, it's a, gra a, gra a, a grapple, but it, okay. you can call it a claw. I'll call it a claw. When okay. the claw comes in and does all that stuff, that's how they're inspecting it? That, that's okay. correct, yeah. So they then if they make see sure, something yeah, they want to make sure there's nothing like that. hidden in the trunk, you know. So once all the scraps have been picked clean, the real fun starts. This machine fragmentizes, and one of the benefits of doing that, in addition to the densification, is that it frees all the material up so that it can then be sorted, and and the the clean steel or metal can be um, uh, classified and, and segregated, uh, while the trash and any contaminants can be removed. A gas cap, and we'll find. Obviously, Betty Jane sure can work but she doesn't come cheap. Oh, a shredder of this size is, is two or three million dollars and all the support conveyors and whatnot are four or five million dollars, you know, the, the motor is a half a million to a million. But there is an upside to that price tag. With this car shredder, Grossman's productivity has multiplied seven or eight times at a minimum. So instead of running 25 to 30 tons of scrap an hour through their plant, they see 250 to 300 tons an hour through this machine. Well, how much is your electricity bill? Well, on? that, you know, as I uh, was talking to you about earlier, we've only got one month of experience, and I think the first bill was right around $28,000. So, and that was an experimental month. Right. We haven't really ramped up. So, so and you, but you, you hope that that bill is bigger next month? Absolutely. That means you're doing more <laughs> right. business? Yeah. As quickly as it came in, the scrap is sent back out to become part of something new again. So by tomorrow, this may be in the furnace at the mill. It'll be rolled into new steel. Within a week, it'll be at General Motors or Chrysler, and it'll become a new car. So, I mean, our guys like to think that we don't process scrap, we make Cadillacs.